name is Catherine Sturrock and I bring to you the Sugar Button Design Moulds made in conjunction with Katie Sue Designs. We're going to show you how to work with the Enchanted Door today. This is a great mould, it's very very versatile, it can be used for all sorts of different things. For instance a fairy door, a church door, the door to an enchanted castle, you know, your imagination really holds no bounds. So very very easy to use this one, it's quite a chunky mould. It's made of food grade silicon, so it's used for fondants and edible foods as well as uh, your clays and your waxes and soaps and all those other things that you can put into the cage seal moulds. To start we're just going to use a little bit of corn flour and dust the mould itself. This just makes sure that if there's any moisture in there that it's not going to affect the clay so that the clay can be released nice and easily. Just tap out any excess so that you've not got any white residue in there. If you do find you get a little bit of residue, just wipe it off with a, a wet wipe or a piece of damp kitchen towel and that should take care of that for you. A little bit of a word about the clay itself. I'm using the Hearty Air Dry Clay, which this, this has been white, it's come from the white block and I've used some of the black Hearty, just a small amount mixed into it to give me, give me this uh, lovely grey, which is going to be the stonework around the door and then I've used magenta and again it's a very strong colour so I've put a little bit of white in there so it's still very bright but it's been toned down a little bit and that's going to be used for the door itself and we're going to add a wooden step which is brown hearty and also the details of the door handle and the hinges we're going to do with black clay so very easy to start if you look at the mould itself if you're building up in layers and in colours you want to look at the areas that would be from the face of it on the front of your, your piece. So I would suggest maybe just do one colour to start with so you can see where all the detail is. And you'll see that the most prominent areas are going to be the hinges and the door handle. So that's what I'm going to start with. So using some black clay, I'm going to look at there, we've got a little door handle, it's just a small amount of clay that we can just drop in there and literally press that down with a fingertip. So very, very easy. The hinges, I'm just going to roll and place across the centre and then I'm going to work with a tool just to drag the clay into those other areas of that little hinge. If you find you miss any bits it's not a problem, the clay will still pick up the detail and you can always paint those in if you'd rather not work the separate colours in. So for instance you could leave the hinges out completely and when you put the colour in for the door then it will pick up the areas of the hinge and you can just catch the top with paint or maybe a gilding wax or something like that so you could have gold or silver hinges it's entirely up to you so I'm just using a tool just to pull across the clay into those crossbars of the hinge you could actually start with the stonework around the edge before doing this but I, want, I wanted to get these finer details out of the way first just so you can see where we're going with it so if you're short of clay, which I'm a little bit short there, I'm just going to take the tiniest bit with my tool and push into place. Now I'm using a clay tool. This is uh, the tool that I use when I'm working with polymer clay, which is the oven bake clay, which can also be used in these moulds as well. It doesn't have to be the air dry. But you can use a ball tool or a dresden tool, which is used by the sugar craft artists. They're all things that are easy to get hold of and you've probably got something in your crafty stash that you can work with such as the rounded end of a paintbrush, that's another good tool as well. So I'm sure everyone's got something that they can utilise. So now we've got the hinges in place and the door handle, I'm just going to top up there where I can see a little bit of a gap. We're going to start to build the rest of the detailing. So I'm taking my grey clay and I think we'll do the stonework next. And because we're going around the outer edge, I'm going to roll out the clay so it's a little bit thinner, so it's more of a sausage. It makes it easier just to feed that into place. So I'm just working around with fingertips, just pushing that down into the mould. If you don't have quite enough, you can easily add it in the sec second piece or a third piece. You know, you can top this up wherever's required. You don't have to worry about doing it all in one go. So we've got that bottom stone there that's been missed, so we're just going to top that up. And then pay attention to where the different areas are so we can see the woodwork of the door and you can see there if I just pull that to one side and hold it up you can see easily where the stonework finishes so you want to make sure that you work to those lines we're going to put a step in you could do all, all of this with the grey and use it all as stone but I'm going to put a wooden step into this one so I'm just going to 
use my tool just to make sure that all these little areas are filled nicely. And then we're going to go over the top of the rolling pin shortly as well to make sure it's all compacted down and picking up all of the detail. And we'll go with some brown for the wooden step next. And again, I'm just rolling a basic shape out and feeding that across. It doesn't matter if I now overlap the colours because we've replaced the clay where we need it. So from the front, you can see exactly what you need to see. And from the back, if the colours overlap, it, it isn't a problem. You're going to stick this down onto your project so it's not a problem. And then finally, we want the door. So this is where the main detail is picked up because we've got that wood grain running through the mould. So you don't need to worry about adding your own wood grain effects, it's already done for you. Now what I'm doing here is just rolling out, if I just bring that a little bit more into view for you, just rolling out slightly, just to give me a nice flat surface. I find it's easier to work with than just going in with a ball of clay and then pushing it around. So again, I can now overlap those other colours, it doesn't matter. So just push that down and you can see where the heart shape is. Now that's a little hole in the door, so you could put some um, perspex or acetate or something underneath so you can make a little window. If it was a Christmas door you could put a little wreath around it. So lots of different ways you can work with this. Now we don't need a lot of colour just to bring that up to the level of the mould itself. So when you get to that stage just go over the top with a rolling pin. You can see if you need to top up anywhere but I know that there's enough there to pick up all that detail. So just to neaten things off and to give a really clean finish, I'm going to use a fingertip just to go around the outside edge, pulling inwards from the outer edge. So this is going to just define all the outside lines for us and also helps us release the clay from the mould. So there, we're ready to start to flex now and see the magic happen. So just by working around the mould itself you can see there how easily that is coming away. Just be a little bit careful of the post in the middle because that's a bit of a sticking point if the clay is too wet but you can always just give it a bit of a helping hand and I can see that's lifting out nicely now. So just keep working around and if needs be just give it a little gentle lift out. But you can see now, look at the detail in the door. It picks that up perfectly. Use things like distress ink or your powders. You could dust those on to pick up the detail in the stonework and again further onto the, uh, the wood grain effect that will really bring that out. Gilding wax, all those things can be used to, to decorate. Lots of different mediums. I think this is going to be my fairy door. So I've already made a couple of toastals from the snail mould. Now the snail mould comes, which way shall I have them? I'll have them this side comes with a couple of toasters so you can build up as many of these as you like but I just think if it's a fairy door it's got to have toasters on the outside and then that's ready to stick onto my project. Thank you for watching, I hope you can join me in some of the other tutorials using the sugar button moulds. <laughs>